Hello! We're Izzy and Kira. In August of 2023, we left our tiny rented London flat for a life on the canals. There's been lots of ups and downs and we never seem to stop learning. We've decided to document our adventures, bringing you guys along with us. Join us as we explore the UK waterways and renovate our 62-foot floating home, Lavender Lee. Hello. Hello, good evening. We're about to head off on a uh, evening cruise. We're picking up pretty much where we left off last week. Um, if you didn't see last week, we had a really stressful cruise. We, we somehow were supposed to make it all the way to a new spot, but ended up kind of ending up where we started, but just winded, turned the other way around. So yeah, we need to move on because we've been here for too long as it is. But first I need Izzy to check the smell in the gas locker. Yeah. Um, if you didn't see last week, essentially, Kira thought that she smelt gas in the gas locker. So um, we've turned it off and we had it on very briefly today yeah. um, to see whether the smell is there. Um, and if not, then maybe it was just... I don't know, maybe it was just my brain. Um, but yeah, I'm going to have a little smell now. Have fun. <laughs> see whether we do have a gas leak. Down they go. Izzy has a much better sense of smell than me, which is why I'm making them do this. I think my nose lies to me. Yeah, there is a smell of something. Is it gas though? Not, it's really hard to know. Well, gas is a very specific smell. I could smell it in there earlier, but what it kind of- smell? I think it just smells like old. Like, like musty? Yeah, but I think that's just because it's a gas locker. But I mean, what I smelt wasn't what it smells like in there now. It kind of smells like, like rotting things. Yeah, which I'm maybe, fine with. Maybe it's just got a bit gross at the bottom. Maybe. Let's just keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on it and see. So I think Kira might have just thought she smelt something and didn't, but we will keep an eye on it because obviously safety comes first. Yeah, you don't want to mess with the gas, do you? We don't want anything to happen to Lavi. No. So now we can cruise on our way. Yeah, we need to go because it's the sun setting and classic us have left it to the last minute. The same sad eyes it taught me to recognize in my own, on my own. And now my brain's turned black, and I can't get you back. I had to go, and I know that you told me not to. Worried way too late. So when you dream about me, please just say that you'll miss me, even if it isn't true. Cause now that you're gone, think I'm floating, my limbs are at sea. Wanna thank you each night when I Cause to hold you is the first time in my life that my heart finally ran clean And now it's starting to bleed again Again Nothing we can't handle. So yeah, we're just heading down here. Um, back onto the Regents, I think. Back onto right? the Regents, I think we are now. And um, yeah, just see if we can find somewhere to moor up.
so we're looking to moor up pretty imminently. Um, it's so lovely around here. I had no idea it was going to be this pretty. So yeah, that's good. It's another spot for us. Apart from like the graffiti that we're just yeah. going. Well, <laughs> the graffiti adds to the city atmosphere, yeah. doesn't it? That's so, true. Yeah. Hopefully we'll find somewhere to moor up now. I'm just listening to some updates Izzy has done to one of their songs, <clears throat> which is Broken Nostalgia, which you guys will have heard before, but it's not complete yet. And fun fact about this song, that Izzy wrote this when they were 16? Yeah, maybe 15 or 16. 15, 16. It was, do it was for my GCSE coursework. Yeah. And um, ever since I heard it, I've, I've really, really loved the song. And I have been encouraging Izzy for ages to like make a proper like recorded version of it with all the skill that they have now. So I'm very excited about when this song keeps progressing. And also keep an eye out because Izzy is going to be putting their music on Bandcamp, um, which means that they can put some more new releases and not necessarily new releases, but just like new songs and things that they're writing for the channel and stuff. So everything that, that, that you hear on the channel will hopefully be on Bandcamp eventually. Is that right? Yeah. And also, we're going to get some more EPs printed. We'll let you guys know when that's happening and when that has happened and when you can get them. But yeah, we had lots and lots of requests and the first batch that we had just left over, say we, Izzy had left over, um, sold really quickly and everyone seemed to love them. So we're going to get some more printed. So if you guys are interested in buying a physical copy of Izzy's EP for When I Sleep, then stay tuned because they will be available again at some point. Yeah. What are we doing, Kira? Okay, we're emptying the cassette, but this is worse than usual because we have run out of the blue stuff that you put in the cassette. We and what does the blue stuff do? Like breaks your waist down. So this isn't going to be very pleasant. And also, we've got the horrible grated L sand point to contend with because for some reason Victoria Park is still our closest L sand point, which is not nice. No, you really don't want to see this actually. It smells really bad. It stinks, but it did break down, didn't it? Yeah, it broke down surprisingly well actually. So um, This is really unpleasant. I mean, you're doing the hard work. I'm just stood watching. Yeah. Yeah. It started to run out when you were away. So I had to, had to do a couple of unloads of the l -San where it was really, really stinky. So I thought it was your turn. That's fair. Slosh, slosh, slosh. I've just come to see Kira in her show that she's doing at the moment. Not, not in. She's written it. I'm not, not in, she's it. in it. <laughs> but she's stage managing a show at the Riverside Studios at the moment, which is really cool. It was press night tonight. Yeah. So I was very proud. We're just in the, her dressing room, feeling very <laughs> fancy. Very fancy. Was it a good show? Yeah, it was a good show. It was all right. I'm yeah. glad that press night's over. <laughs> Hello. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Um, I had a lovely time going to see the press night of Kira's show last yeah. night. And this morning we wanted to have a chat to you about something that we haven't really spoken about on the channel before, which is the sort of financial side of boat life. And is it as cost effective as we originally thought when we were moving on? 
because for us um moving onto the boat um in part was definitely because we really fell in love with the lifestyle but there was definitely the other half of it was probably that financially it was going to save us some money mm -hmm. um compared to our previous living setup which was um paying for a rented flat in like north london and mm -hmm. um, which cost us roughly about 1300 pounds a month which we then discovered was going to be going up to 1500 pounds a month and we were like oh my god it's no too way. much for us so yeah um so the calculations we've come up with is very much like an average very much like cost dependent on our personal usage mm -hmm. um obviously we can't speak for what everyone uses because i think i think we are quite frugal with things like gas with things, especially yeah and, um whatever else but i will say as well that we've phrased things in kind of like per month structure but we'll also try to talk about um what those costs look like every year um because i would say most of the costs that we have come around sort of once a year or twice a year mm. there aren't as many sort of like standard monthly costs that like you would have in a house like bills or whatever but that doesn't mean that we like don't put money aside every month for those specific amenities and we should also preface this by saying that this is not including anything to do with buying the boat or um anything like blacking it's purely just our living costs now we have the boat if you're looking to get an arrow boat yourself the prices really vary you can get a project boat that needs loads doing to it that mm -hmm. might be quite small for maybe as low as like 15 grand if you find something that is probably old maybe needs some overplating things like that mm -hmm. uh, needs a full fit out they say that boats tend to go for like a grand a foot i'm not seeing that within like the market at the moment no. um maybe with brand new boats that is still the case but shop around yeah we got a bargain we so do. maybe you will too so just keep your eyes out guys that's what i say i don't know what that means <laughs> so our first cost that we're going to mention is uh, of course, our CRT license, our Canal and River Trust license, which essentially allows you to be on the canals and rivers. Um, it also provides you with, you know, water points, um, disposal points, al sand points, stuff like that. And um, it like funds the maintenance of the waterways, so like lock repairs or like when they're like, is it dredging the canal? Is that what they? I have it? no idea. Well, yeah, it, it covers like all of those things um, to keep the canals sort of boat worthy now unfortunately um the uk government has decided to cut its funding to the crt so that means that the licenses for boaters are going up quite a lot at the moment to essentially substitute for that but we're just gonna go on what we most recently paid so we are paying every six months at the moment originally when we signed up we were told that we couldn't pay monthly but i think there is a way that we could go onto a direct debit yeah um, but at the moment we pay every six months because that's what's the most affordable to us rather than paying every year in a big financial chunk which mm -hmm. we'd have to save a lot more for in february we had to pay 783 pounds and 70 pence for a six month license and um, we'll have to pay again in september um i think it may go up a little bit but roughly that equates to about 130 pounds a month it is a bit cheaper if you're kind of able to put the whole amount up front but not a load i think we worked out maybe it was 121 pounds a month or something like that and that is dependent on the size of your boat so we have a 62 foot boat which means that our license fee is quite expensive yeah so the next thing we have is um, our insurance. The insurance we went with last time, we're coming up to our renewal of our license because we've nearly been on the boat a year, which is a very weird thought. Um, but the insurance we paid last year was £346 for the year, which equates to £28.83p a month. We're also looking to change insurance providers for next year because we had to pay a bit more than a lot of boaters would um, because we'd never been on a boat before. So we were inexperienced, which meant that we had to pay a bit more. And also quite a lot of insurance companies that won't insure first time boaters. So we were quite limited by that. But we'll hopefully have a lot more options on what insurance company we go for. So hopefully in future years, we're going to be looking at a cheaper sort of annual cost. We also pay um, a set fee every year for like a rescue and repair service that is kind of like the aa for boats um so we did that for this year and we opted for like one of the more expensive memberships which cost us um 385 pounds for the year that comes out to about 32 pounds a month 
we will not be doing that next year um we're not going to go into much detail about it but we yeah, we haven't had the greatest experience yeah and... it hasn't i think it was very useful for us when we just started boating we had that big long journey from birmingham we, we had, had no contacts no contact. yeah. we didn't know any engineers we didn't know who to trust um, I think it was very useful for that. And we would still maybe like call them out to do like an individual job. Mm -hmm. I just don't think it's it's been worth it for us. So we will save that £32 a month next year. So the next cost that we have is our gas. So how our gas works is we have um, 11 kilogram uh, Calagas bottles that we keep in a locker at the in the bow at the front of the boat. And we have two of those kind of on the go at, not at the same time but alternating so when one runs out we can switch over to the other one then get the other one replaced not at the moment though because we've run out of one yeah we have um, we tend to go through them really slowly so i would estimate that we go through just over about two a year so we've calculated three gas bottles in a year um to kind of give you an example of like a generous gas usage. We use gas for cooking, um, so like our oven and our hob is powered by gas. I don't believe it's used for anything else on the boat. The price of gas bottles really varies. It completely depends in the area that you're in. If you're in London, it's gonna be more expensive. If you're elsewhere, it might be cheaper. Mm -hmm. um, if you're getting it from the fuel boats, it might cost a bit different if you're getting it from a petrol station or something like that. Gas bottles kind of, we've estimated at about 40 pounds. That's kind of an, an average of what we have spent. Um, so if we got three of those in a year, that equals about £126. If we divided that up, it would come to about £10.50 a month. Um, honestly, I thought it was going to be a lot more expensive than that compared to our sort of bills that we used to pay for in a flat for gas. It's a lot cheaper. I agree. I think like gas is definitely one of those costs that is like compared to some other costs is very, very low. Compared to our diesel costs. Yeah, compared to our diesel costs. But, um, but that's solely on our usage. Obviously, we can't speak for everyone's usage. You might use a lot more, but we do make a lot of cups of tea. So I'm surprised mm. it's not more. So... In terms of electricity and power, um, most of the time that is free from the sun. Yay, we love the sun. <laughs> so we've got five solar panels which provide us with good electricity. I would say within like spring, summer and autumn, it's mostly sufficient to get us through the day. The main hindrance to us at the moment is our battery setup is not very good, which we will be looking to upgrade soon. But it's expensive. So it is It is expensive. Yeah. In sort of winter time and in the sort of darker days like today we end up running our engine a little bit to make sure that the batteries are fully charged so that all factors into the big diesel payment that we keep talking about. Kira's off to work so I'm going to finish Sorry. the video. <laughs> we underestimated how much time we had as per usual um, and it's, I've got to go. It's all right I can I'm let them know the, goss, the facts. Izzy's gonna do a lovely talk to you about diesel and how it's expensive <laughs> all right ah, love you. i'll see you later oh my god i'm causing chaos <laughs> you're taking the curtain <laughs> bye see you later bye. bye safe travels hello it is kira at work um i've got two shows today so i've just finished the first show and now i've got a couple of hours before the second show one of the perks of working in theater means that you can use their facilities. <laughs> so um, I've just brought a load of washing to work. Um, so many socks. And yeah, just stealing the theater's washing machine, um, which is great, it's really useful. And it has like a quick 15 minute cycle one as well. And the clothes smell great. Um, and they also have showers, so very good. Very good industry to work on while living on a boat because you can uh, find ways around things. But anyway, uh, I will pass you back to Izzy. Hello, so now that Kira has gone, I thought I'd sit down and just chat to you a bit about the wonder that is diesel. So we have a diesel fire rather than like a multi-fuel stove or a wood burning stove, which means that our diesel consumption is a lot higher than other people. So um, in the winter time, because of our diesel stove, our diesel consumption is at a high. There's probably six months of the year that we would be using our fire for. Out of that, probably about four of those months we'd have the fire on continually, and two of the months kind of in the interim transitional seasonal period. We might have it on during the night uh, or the mornings or the evenings, but not in the day. But I've had a little look and across winter, um, our average spend was about 133 pounds a month on diesel. And during the summer months, we don't use our diesel fire at all so we're just paying for propulsion so diesel that kind of makes the boat move and that usually comes to i would say about like 13 14 pounds a month 
we probably would only have the fuel boat come and stop in once over that season or maybe twice um, and fill up jerry cans and our tanks and stuff so across the year our monthly diesel cost therefore comes to about 73 pounds 33 um, which kind of reflects um the higher costs in the winter and the lower costs in the summer so after all of those facts and figures we are looking at spending about 275 pounds a month on boat costs which when you compare that figure to the 1300 pounds a month we were spending uh, to live in london it's a bit of a no-brainer really Thanks for watching this week's video. We hope it was useful for us to share a bit about our boat finances for those of you considering boat life. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like and subscribe for weekly boaty adventures. And you can follow us over on Instagram at Izzy and Kira. Bye! Bye.